All right, well, um, I've been working on wheels the last week, I guess, off and on. Not pushing it, just taking my time. It's Friday after Thanksgiving, so I'm off today. And uh, I just decided to uh, make the taper tool, the, the tool here, which I'll show you. You blow it off a little air pressure. And... Um, It's just a high speed tool bit. Um, I laid it out and then I used a Dremel tool, uh, actually a Fordham tool, and I ground it, just kept grinding it and working it until I got it right. And uh, that's what I use to do the flange. I do them in reverse, the, the machine running clockwise, and uh, the tool's upside down in the machine. So it um, eliminates the chatter and uh, I did the bucket here 50 wheels I, I don't think it took me two hours to do them so it's just the final process uh, while I'm doing I'm checking the bores to make sure like I have my no-go gauge go go no-go gauge that I made in other words just a right right about there Right about there is where it's considered it's smaller, it's tapered down. Okay, so when I put it in, if it doesn't go past that half an inch right there, I know that I'm good. Now, if it did, so what? So what? No big deal. Just make that particular one axle to fit that wheel. Maybe it'll a few thousandths over. They're never going to come apart uh, unless you regauge it, but um, regauge the the, the track because there's seven and a quarter, seven and a half of course, you know, I know you guys out there seven and a half, you think you're the only ones around, but we got seven and a quarter here too and I had to design, when as a designer of locomotives, I have to design everything to match both gauges because there, there is a market for the seven and a quarter. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start machining these uh, and uh, before I do that, I think I'm going to go over on the um, chalkboard in the other room here set up and uh, we're going to talk about how the flange is, uh, the shape of the flange and so on. Then I'm going to come back here and do the do the wheels. Alright, this is going to be uh, the final part of doing the wheels, the wheel process. Um, doing the flange, contouring the flange and so on. And um, For a long time, this is what's called the, I will start with the L.A. L L A L S standard, then it was the B L S standard, then it was the I B L S standard. And uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people agree with this because on the back of the wheel they have a 10 degree. On the other side of the wheel, 10 degree with a little bit of a radius. Now I just uh, in the process of moving some of my stuff and uh, I uh, was categorizing all of my drawings that I've had over the years and I found one by a uh, prominent supplier that showed the wheel contour exactly like this 10 degrees I don't want to mention names here but 10 degrees on either side of the center of the flange and like this what some people have called a pizza pie cutter very sharp uh, what that's going to do is uh, cause you to go out of gauge and I'll explain that in a minute now what I do as I make it 10 degrees on this side, on the, on the radius side, I put a 1 8 radius here, not 3 32nd. 3 32nd is too sharp, too, too sharp a radius. And then straight on the back, straight with just a radius there. And of course the 3 degrees out this way, 2 degrees 15 minutes. Well, if you can read a 10, 10 whatever it is, 3 degrees here and 3 degrees there. Okay, now, now we're going to show, this is the railhead, radius like this. All right, now if you have a if you have a bigger radius, it's going to cause that all the work to be done on this portion, this poor small portion out here. Not doing anything, of course. This small portion is where it's going to ride right in here, and it's going to keep this area here away from the rail, right in here. 
going to be a gap there, and you're going to really ride on this radius right in this area right here. And that's what causes, actually makes less friction for pulling. Um, the other thing is that when you're over here, the back, straight back here, and then, of course, over here, this is going to, if your guardrails are good, if you, if you, if you maintain that gap, whatever, whatever gap you decide, because uh, let's talk about this IBLS wheel standard. How could you have a wheel standard without a track standard? There's no track standard, nothing. And there's no rail standard. Now, the, the railroads have an AAR rail standard, the, the shape of the rail. They don't care about the bottom part, but they're talking about the head. It's a certain shape. We have nothing like that. All kind of different rails all over the place. Nobody maintains any of that. So, uh, properly, it should be the guardrail, so you have this space back here behind here holding it. Now, if you had the 10 degree, what's going to happen is that's going to push that over more, over this way more, and it causes it to pick the points more here, or whatever, whatever's, going, whatever's going on on this side. But if you pull it over far enough with the straight part, and you maintain this guardrail, it's going to pull up, so you have plenty of gap here, so you're not going to pick anything over here. And uh, that's my uh, thoughts. I, I see some people out there making it straight. Um, Mountain Car Company, for example, they do a pretty good job on the contours. Uh, what David Lazarus showed on the Chasky was a pretty good, correct contour, where your flanges on, on, the, on the frogs are running right down the center. And the guardrails would actually uh, keeps your gauge for you at the frogs. And there's what they call a check gauge. That's what you should be checking, not back to back. You should be checking the check gauge. See if the over the flange to the back of the other wheel. If that's right, then it's going to work. But anyway, um, that's some of my thoughts on there. You do it the way you want. We did thousands of wheels. I never had any complaints about people derailing. I'd send them out without just my way of doing it, and nobody ever complained. Um, so uh, we're going to go up now on the lathe and finish out the last bunch of wheels. That's it for the wheels for now. They just break the corner a little bit. They have a zero set on the cross slide. Just get down to the zero. And that's it. Keep feeding it in steady. There a second or two. That's it. thing I need to do is uh, go through them and check them to see which ones make sure I got all the ones done right with the bore the ones that are oversized I can put them on the side and fix those not a big deal or make make access to fit them but there's probably one or two in there that's uh, oversized in the bore but uh, other than that we're okay um, next we're going to go on and uh, do the axles show you how I do those and pressing the axles on and the whole process of, of uh, basic wheel turning so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I certainly enjoyed making it and thanks for watching.